guests in studio is eight-year NFL vet and former Browns defensive back Mr. Monday Night. Led the league in interceptions yes. in 1989. Felix Wright, thank you so much for being with I us I appreciate today. it. I'm not a barker. I just practice what I preach. Hey, we'll leave it up to Hanford. He's got it down. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, what the hell you mean you talk about you not a barker? I mean, that's all we did was bark dog in the, in the dog pound. Who barked more smack on the field? All right, I guess that'd have to be me then. That you know, I was, I was all the I, time. Uh, I, spe- speaking of uh, talking smack, Felix, we were going to have – uh, a guy on today, he called in the last minute, and he canceled, said he couldn't make it, but he's going to be on uh, probably within the next couple of weeks. A guy that we thought you would have uh, liked to chop it up with a little bit, talking about Lewis Lips. Oh, yeah. He oh, was yeah. going to uh, he was gonna be on. What you been up to, man? Man, just just hanging out, you know, retired, just uh, working out every day, just trying to keep it together. Well, you you know, we, we work out together at the Y every, every, every day. Are you an elliptical guy like him? I'm a treadmill guy. He, oh wow! Yeah. yeah, but he does. He's come he's no there. Sissy. He he loves the, he, <laughs> <laughs> he he love he loves the treadmill. Gab he'll he'll, he'll go in there and he'll get, he'll stay on that treadmill for hours, and uh, and then he uh, some days a few days you lift too. Yeah, and uh, then you're a steam you're a steam guy too. I'm a steam guy. Yeah, so, so he'll go. But I'll he and I in. we we spend a lot of time. Uh, uh, we we laugh and we joke with each other while we're there, but I could tell you this: we definitely uh, do a lot of working out too. Yeah. So, uh, well, I think I recruited. You know, we had a meeting earlier with uh, Kevin Mack and Reggie Langhorn. I think I recruited them over, so they might be coming to work out with oh, us. Oh wow, so. you guys got a crew! Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, we we just we just absolutely uh, love it there. But what what do you think if we'd have had Felix? I mean, uh, Lewis, or uh, you'd have liked that? What do you? Oh, you? I liked it because I'd asked him about those couple picks I had in front of me. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so what else been going on, my friend? Uh, not much. Like I said, I've been retired. I, I worked that beautiful game yesterday, you know, okay. uh, you know that big win against the 49ers. Now, you know, Reggie Langhorn and I are, are NFL inspectors, so we're on the sidelines, so we get to see everything that goes on. And we were right there, front and center, of that little scuffle they had before the game. Actually, it was right oh. after we start, talked to you. Yeah, that's you what it is. that actually – Played to our advantage. Yesterday. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. You know, that was interesting because uh, that's something we're going to get into a little bit more because you were right there on the field yeah. watching all that action when all that came down. But I, I, I think that was Debo Sambo, De- Samuels and well, Debo couple of guys. Debo and number 11. What's his name? Uh, EU or? Uh, uh, IU. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, wide receiver. Yeah, he was talking stuff. He came by and he was talking stuff to Newsom. And then him and Newsom started going back and forth. And then what happened is that, you know, you know, it's 50-yard line is a cutoff spot. So, you know, San Francisco has this 50. They have this 50 to warm up. San Francisco was waiting for their big guys to come out, and they crossed over that 50. Oh, oh. speaking of uh, you talking about uh, Greg Newsom, did you see in one particular play uh, in the game, I don't know whether it was IU or who the wide receiver was, but one of them put that helmet right in Greg Newsom's chest. And, man, I'm telling you, I thought he had hurt him. I mean, really? oh, man, took him to the ground. I mean, just knocked him, uh, almost knocked him out down on one of those plays. I didn't it, see that. Oh, it was crazy. It was crazy. But we're going to we're gonna get into all this yeah. uh, a little bit later. We'll get here. into it because we got to take our first break. It was tough because I was in the stands. And were you at the game? I was there. Okay, so I don't know. Maybe you could see better than me or I got to wear my glasses. I didn't I didn't notice that, but we'll get into it right after this. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. We are joined today by Felix Wright, and we were just talking about, you know, the pregame scuffle yesterday. <laughs> and then, Hanford, you brought it up. We watched it during the break. We can't replay it now because, you know, copyright. But it was Jawan Jennings <laughs> who had that bully of a move running over Greg Newsome near the end zone. Hey, um, Gab. What do you think of that? Gab, Felix, I'm telling you, I saw it. I mean, you guys, and now I'm, I'm happy we was able to show it to both of you guys right. uh, off the air. But Flex. I'm telling you, the guy almost hurt him. <laughs> did, did he get up and get him after 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 it's all said and done? Get up and get him. He was trying to catch his breath after that hit. He just took right in his chest. That's what's the whole thing with. But you know how Greg is, man. He's right. always talking. Uh, he's Stop. always talking shit out there. Right, you know? He's right, feisty. Right. He's like you, though. Don't yeah. you see yourself well, in him? Yeah, you know. I, but you got to bag it up. Right. You, know? you do got to bag it up. You got to bag it up, and uh, and most of the time, and I like Greg. I mean, right. I really do. Flex, Flex, say you gonna be watching. So I got. <laughs> I got to watch what I said, but I like Greg. But truth is the truth now, and right. you saw it. You gonna tell me the guy didn't put that helmet in his 
chest. Right, right. I, I'd got to make at least look good. And see, you yeah. got to you have to be careful because Greg will see you on the <laughs> sideline, and I can see him now coming up to you having a problem with that. But I, I've let him off the hook a couple times with his uniform infractions. So oh, he's good. So, okay, right, okay. Right. So he's he, he good. So, so he, you're on his you're on his side about this. I think we should talk a little bit about Felix's story because it is super cool. Just like the Browns being in underdog position, handing the 49ers their first loss of the season, undefeated no more. You were once an underdog, you know, because your career started, well, it almost didn't happen. Right. Tell us about how you were undrafted out of Drake and your path to the NFL. Well, you know, at Drake University, we were a Division One school at the time. Uh, but uh, we didn't get a lot of recognition, didn't get a lot of publicity, and uh, didn't get a lot of recognition. Not a lot of people came by, so I kind of went undrafted, unseen. Uh, didn't really know what I was going to do, but I did graduate and got my degree as, as a teacher, and uh, I decided that uh, since I didn't get picked up, didn't have much of a choice, I needed to kind of go back home. So I went back to Missouri and uh, and was fortunate enough to be hired uh, in Joplin, Missouri, in the R9 schools just uh, as, a t as a teacher. So I did a little bit of uh, physical education, did a little bit of driver's ed, and uh, health and sex education that I taught. So that was pretty cool. And then I also coached football, girls basketball, and uh, boys and girls track. Wow, so you stayed yeah. busy. Oh, it was, it, was, it was crazy. It was good. Uh, and it was, you know, I thought I was going to just live the path of my uncle because I, I liked what he did as a coach and, and – uh, becoming a head coach became my goal at that time and then one day we were at practice and we were doing pretty good as a football team we were I think we were like 500 but uh uh I was out one day giving instructions to a cornerback because I was the linebacker coach but our cornerbacks weren't playing well and weren't the technique so I went back and because I played corner in college and I went back and did a few uh few moves on on the corners and and you know covering the wide receivers that came out and uh and after every practice, coaches had a meeting. And so when we were in there having our coaches' meetings, the coaches, uh, a couple of the coaches were just looking at me and said, man, why are you still here? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they said, well, man, you should be, at, you should be playing ball somewhere. And I said, man, we're talking high school. I said, you know, I played collegiate. Yeah, I should be able to shut down a high schooler. And they said, no, man, you really should, should give it an opportunity. And I said, ah, man, forget about that stuff. So it was, it was crazy because, uh, you know, after practice, uh, you know, I, I lived in Carthage, Missouri, because that's where I grew up. It's about 15 minutes away. And on my ride home, I said, you know what? Um, I remember getting a letter from an agent. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe we should give him a call if I can find that letter. So uh, I, when I got home, I, I talked to my mom and asked her. I said, Mom, you, you know where my school books are from Drake, where I went to school? And she said, yeah, they're upstairs in the attic. I said, well, there's a letter in there that I, uh, you know, I opened up, but I never called the agent. And so uh, she found the, the book that the letter was in. I, I uh, looked at it and, and just basically just by fluke just said, well, I'm, I'm going to give him a call. And uh, I remember his name. I will never forget it. His name is Elliot Lehman. And so I dialed the number. He was in Philadelphia. And I said, Elliot, this is Felix Wright. And he said, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> and he said, you never called me. And I said, well, I thought, I thought agents called players. I didn't know players <laughs> called right, agents. Right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, – I said, well, he asked me how I was doing. I told him I was teaching and, and coaching. And, uh, you know, if he had any opportunities for me to play ball, you know, let me know. And he says, I'll see what I can do, Felix. He says, uh, you know, I, I know a few people. I'll see what I can, you know, what I can do. And, and I'll, I'll give you a call back in the next day or two. And he called me up, up the next day and he says, well, I got some good news and I got some bad news. And he says, uh, I said, which one do you want first? And I said, well, give me the bad news. And he, he said, well, the, 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 no, he said the good news is that you got uh, you got two tryouts, but the bad news is they're both on the same day. Oh, yeah. So you got to decide which one you want to go to. Okay. So on my teacher's salary, I was saying, well, I'm obviously going to go to the one that's closest. Yeah. So uh, the Detroit Lions and the Houston Oilers. So, uh, you know, in Missouri, the closest was going to be Houston. So I chose to go to Houston. So he set it up, and I had about probably about a month and a half to. Uh, to kind of get ready for the for the tryout, but I I had stayed active with all the high school kids. That, you know, anything I asked them to do, I did as far as running and lifting. So I stayed in pretty decent shape, and uh, I, uh, you know, actually, you know, the time to come, my uncle took off work, and we we drove down to uh, to Houston, and 
It was a two day deal, and they were had, you scared? Uh, not not really scared, nervous. Uh huh. But uh, you know, and I didn't really know what to expect when right. we, when we got down there, and uh, when we you know there, it was a Friday Saturday gig, and I was I was scheduled to to work out on on Saturday, so I went down there on Friday, and we you know we got it you know got into a hotel and and. Uh, and they wanted us to come over just to watch the early group because uh-huh. that group Friday was going to watch the Saturday group. So, uh, so we got settled in the hotel, and we went over there to see it. And there was like 150 uh, athletes there on Friday. Oh boy, that that can't be too. Oh, it was uh, crazy. Yeah, and I, I know. I, I know. And so I I uh, I looked at my uncle, and I said, uh, I think this is a waste of time. Oh, I said, you, you know, I said I'm not going to get a decent look. You uh-huh. know, you got these many people here. And my see, uncle, he forgot his name was Felix Wright. <laughs> you know, and, and, and see, yeah. that, that's what you forgot. Your name well, was Felix yeah. Wright. Yeah. And my uncle said, I took off work. You're going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm like, all right. <laughs> you, you better make it count. Yeah. He said, I took off work, you know. And so uh, we went home that night, stretched. Actually, I, w- I remember going over to uh, Rice University and working out, stretching, getting ready. Woke up the next day, went over and worked out, and kind of went through. It's kind of like a combine workout, Man, you know, where you I go in. I have adrenaline in, listening. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, nervous yeah, listening. You, to you this. weigh yourself, <laughs> and then you, you know, you go in and lift weights, and uh, and and came out on the field and, and just actually, you know, did a little bit of backpedaling, caught the balls, just did some defensive back drills, and after about 45 minutes, they uh, they called us up. The head coach's name was uh, Eddie Biles at the time, and the defensive back coach was uh, Kenny Houston, who's a Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so th- what they did is they brought the you know we had about 150 people there for Saturday, and so they brought the group from Friday up as well. So we had 300 guys out there on the football field, <laughs> and they said well, we'd like to thank you for you know everybody coming out and you know spending your money because it was you know we had to pay for everything. He said, really? Yeah, we had to pay for everything. So I had to pay for my hotel, my meals. Wow. That's gas. crazy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they said, well, you know, we we appreciate you coming out, and we've uh, we picked three people. And I was a second name call. No. Yeah. Did yeah. you stick your chest out? No, man, I was nervous. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what to I didn't, I didn't know no, what to, Be to honest, do. did you feel like, in, you know, sometimes when you're in the zone for something like that, you're not yeah. paying attention to everyone else. Right. But you were aware that there were many athletes trying out. Did oh, you yeah. have a gut feeling that you were rising to the top? I had, I had no idea. I just knew that I ran well, mm-hmm. and uh, I caught every ball that was thrown to me. It's just one of those deals where I think I was just at the right place at the right time. Well, I see. You know? I, I, I think too. You know, you you were just uh, when when you look at you, you scream uh, uh, athlete. Right. You know, you got that size, and uh, I could see you uh, uh, maybe being a coach, but I can't. Can you guys see Felix being a teacher? <laughs> I mean, I can. Yeah. He's got a calm demeanor. I bet he's he's yeah. one of those teachers that you you like respect. You know. Well, I mean that. No, you're no, the one no, that freaks no, out no, on the kids because no, no, you were a troublemaker yourself, well, and yes. you're gonna freak out on them the way that you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. but let me let me ask you this: uh, When did you like me? I could tell you this: I knew that I was good enough to be uh, a, a professional athlete, to be mm-hmm. on someone's team. I knew that like uh, maybe my freshman year in college. Right. For you, I would guess I came a little bit later when did you know yourself or did you at some point know to yourself say hey i'm good enough uh, you know i have the talent i i, I can play in the uh, national football well, league I, I, you know what I, I i i can't say that i really knew uh but i knew that I, I was in the lineup halfway through my freshman year so i know being like a three three you know three season three and a half season starter that i would get at least get an opportunity to get invited to an nfl camp but i didn't even get invited Mm-hmm. which was kind of a depressing mm-hmm. because it was a goal. Because I, I remember when I grew up in high school and grade school, that's all I used to, you know, because I, I grew up in a, in a Catholic school, mm-hmm. grade school, and I remember we had to go to church, you know, uh, six days a week. I understand. So we went Monday I'm, through Friday and I, then on Sunday. Dog, I'm Southern and, Baptist, so, yeah. you know, I, I'm and, and, on Catholic, but, you know, we all believe in the same God, right. so that's we understand. Right. I'm with you. But So every every I, I just remember every Sunday – all I would think about is sports in church, and I'd pray about it all the time. That's all I thought about, sports. And I didn't know which sport because my best sport was baseball mm-hmm. because I was an all-state baseball player. I was just an all-conference football player. And the reason why I ended up going to Drake is because they were the first offer. Mm-hmm. 
And my mom and dad says, you get hurt playing baseball all the time. We can't wait until <laughs> the spring because we don't want Drake to rescind right. their offer. Right. Oh. So I took the first offer that came, and that's how I got to, to Drake. Wow. And, Why do I uh, – when I think of you, I you say cartridge, but I'm thinking of why Joplin. Why why does Joplin come to mind when I well, when I Joplin, say you? I thought that's where you're from. Uh, because Joplin's where I actually where I where I taught school. It's uh it's where my uh, it's it's kind of the big city. Carthage is kind of the suburbs okay. of Joplin. Okay. And this is where the airport is. Okay. Because okay. you know when I flew everybody in for my golf tournament, we flew into. Yeah, Joplin. yeah. Oh yeah. boy, boy, did we have some fun. You talking about? <laughs> hey, Gavin, did you see the smile on my face when he started talking about his golf tournament? We'll we'll you get into you we'll, southern boys we'll, yeah, and we'll your get golf. Into that a little bit there. And yeah, I would like to know a little bit more about your rapport too, as as former teammates. So we'll get right back to that. We're gonna take another break and be back with the Hanford Dixon show after this welcome back to the Hanford Dixon show with the top dog himself and alongside us today Felix Wright we were just talking about your really cool story flex and just to finish that up a little bit uh CFL days to the NFL yeah. how'd you make the jump and then I want to talk about you guys playing together <laughs> six years that's like yeah that's a long time to be pals <laughs> well, yeah. well it seemed like a lot longer you know that's all of us say you know I mean, after you tell us about the cfl big dog all right, man. well uh after after i was selected one of three i uh you know i had a, a month before training camp so you know i went back home and worked out and, and kind of hung out and uh came back ready to go in fact uh, i think uh it was probably my best training camp i've had in my whole career Wow. Even better than I had uh, when I had to come back and make the team in, in Cleveland and in, in Canada. And, uh, you know, got cut after the third preseason game, which is crazy because we played on a Saturday and the school gave me to that Friday before that game that I had to resign or not because it was getting close to the school yeah. year. So I had to resign on that Friday. And that Friday. was your income. Yeah, that was yeah. my income. So yeah. I had to resign on Friday, played in that game Saturday, and they let me go Sunday. It was crazy. Oh. Yeah. It was really crazy, but I was really I was. Uh, what was well, going through your mind? Oh, at that I was point. disappointed. Was, I, was, yeah, I, I was disappointed and ticked because I, I really felt that I outplayed a lot of the guys that were in front of me. But uh, I remember Kenny Houston, who was a defensive back coach. He came to me. He said, "Felix, I had nothing to do with this decision. I liked you. I wanted you here." He said, "But you'll be back in the league." But you know, at the time when you hear something like right. that, you'd be like, "Yeah, whatever." Right. Yeah. yeah right. Whatever. Right. So uh, I went back home and, and without a job, and I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, the, the next day, I got a call from the Hamilton Tiger Cats, which I had no idea who they were. Uh, and they said, "Felix, we we saw you in camp, and you can come up and play for us right now." And I'm like, "You know, okay, where's this at?" And they said, "Canada." <laughs> <laughs> I you, said, I you, said, you, in, in, dog, in, the, in the cold up there. You, <laughs> <laughs> you was trying to figure out what the hell they was talking about. What? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, well, uh, okay, well, l l l we'll give it a shot. So they flew me up the next day, and uh, I think I flew. I flew up on Wednesday, and I practiced on on uh, Thursday, and then Friday we flew out to Edmonton. And Saturday, I was on the football field starting at the right corner position against Warren Moon. Wow. And uh, it was crazy. And I was a new guy. And, you, you know, if you're the new guy, they're always going to pick on you. Right. And so Warren's, I think it's his first six passes were at me. And the sixth one, I took it back 90 yards. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So, the, the, yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Huh? So you, yeah. Is so, that why, well, <laughs> you developed the, um, he developed the name Pickmaster. Right. Now, I don't think he developed that over at the CFL. No, no, I didn't. But uh, maybe that's where it started yeah, to that's come where around. Because that was my back. first my first professional interception. So yeah, so uh, so I returned that back and and finished up the season because we only had like four more games in that season, and then I signed a new two year deal, made the Pro Bowl up there. Become they call them All Stars up there. And, okay. And uh, actually, the crazy thing is that uh, in my last year there. Uh, we were in the playoffs, and uh, you know, I, I I just thought that I'd play my whole career in Canada. You know, that's just the way the way I, I thought it was. But uh, and because I didn't really have any pro scouts coming back to look at look at me, but we had a quarterback. His name is Dieter Brock, who was pretty good, and the scouts were there to, to watch him. Okay. And uh, we played Toronto in the uh, Eastern Final, which would be the like the AFC Championship game. They came up to watch Dieter. 
And uh, I ended up, I got four interceptions that day. Wow. One game? Yeah, one game, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Had the fifth Pastor one in my hand and dropped that. He had his official yeah. Monday, yeah. Mr. Monday name. Yeah. Pastor, I had three now in a game, but <laughs> yeah. I never had four. had four. You mean to tell me you had four interceptions had, in one game? Four interceptions in one game. And then, uh, and then, so then we, you know, we won that game, and then we went to the Grey Cup, which is the Super Bowl up there. Okay. And uh, in the first quarter, I got another pick. So I had five picks in two games. And uh, and that following week, we we ended up not winning that game, but it was kind of cool to play in the championship game. And and uh, the next week, I got a call uh, from uh, from five different NFL teams, and uh, my agent was actually from Toronto, Gil Scott, and uh, he he just you know we went and worked out for all of them, and he says I think the best shot is 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 Cleveland, and uh, he asked me what I felt about Cleveland. And I said, well, I th- I think I think that's probably the best choice because. You know, when I'm, uh, Marty was the determining factor because Marty says, Felix, he says, I, you know, I, I just I just got the, the job halfway through the last season. He says, I'm building my team through the CFL, through the USFL, and through the supplemental draft. Because mm-hmm. he, got, he got me through the CFL. He got uh, uh, Kevin Mack, uh-huh. Dan Minifield. Fike, Minifield yeah. through the USFL. Yeah. And he got Bernie through the supplemental draft. Right. So he built his team from multiple different leagues to come together as one. Great players. And he, and he told me, he said, Felix, if you're good enough, you'll play. He says, and, uh, you know, right now you're, you're kind of a tweener where you can play corner and you can also play safety. But he said, but it's, it's going to help. You know, it's going to help us. And so – he but, dog, you yeah. know you could play no corner now. I mean, come hey, on now. Hey, like, hey. Oh, come on now. You know, hey, you, was, know hey. you could play no corner hey, now. I, who was the nickelback in, in I mean, 85? The flag. You had, a, you had somebody over top. Well, you, you, had, know, you know, if you play well, now, you had somebody over top of you now. When you well, I was, still a cor- I was still a corner. But, Flex, you know you could play no corner in National Football I was League. A nickel, I was a nickelback. Now, which safety, is, 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 now, that don't come any better than you at, at safety, but not corner. We had safeties that are taken care of by Donnie Rogers and uh, Chris Rockins <laughs> and the boys. Al Gross. <laughs> you know, so we had them together. But, yeah, so that. Well, what was it like, you two together? Oh, it, it, it was, it, it was I, fun. I'll tell you, it was great. I, I mean, we had uh, myself, Felix. We had uh, Minifield. And uh, who was the other? Who was the? We had, we had we had Al Gross. We had Chris Rockins. We had uh, Brian Washington, and then our last guy we had was Thane Gash. Thane Gash, yeah, that's who I was thinking of. We had Thane yeah. Gash, but it was uh, we we had a good time. But I tell you what, we laid the hammer down. We now. laid the hammer down, yeah. And that's why I also wanted to uh, have Lewis on the day because it, it wasn't Lewis you hit. You you put. I hit Don Beebe. Don Beebe, that's the Buffalo who, Bills. That's who you laid. I mean, yeah. just laid him. They still out. play that. They still play that on the, on some commercials here and there. Yeah, <laughs> and that's actually his football card. Yeah, him getting flipped was crazy. <laughs> now, we, so we've looked at Brown's past. We want to look at Brown's present. Flex, what did you think of our defense against the 49ers? I think I think this defense we have is the closest thing we had back to the '80s teams. Actually, yeah, they, they could they be? actually couldn't be a little better uh, as far as stats go. Mm-hmm. As far as players, you know, I, I had. You know, Hanford and Minifield were pro bowlers. Clay Matthews was a pro bowler. Uh, Bubba Baker was a pro bowler. We, we had lots of uh, – Chip Banks was a pro bowler. So we had lots of pro bowlers back then. Uh, but Swartz has got him going. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he is uh, – he, They're he's believing. Made a, yeah, he, he's made a big difference in, in our uh, – I think just the philosophy, the aggressiveness, and he has our players believing. And the number one important thing is that – they trust him. Yeah. So, uh, I think the defense sparked a lot of the team. They're, you can see them hyping themselves up, you know, in the locker room, hyping the team up in the locker room. And then I think the environment obviously helps. You guys know about the dog pound. What yeah. does that do? Our fan base, how does that translate to on-field performance? Well, I, I can tell you this, uh, and I was a little bit shocked uh, yesterday at the uh, st- well at the stadium on Sunday. I was a little bit shocked because – I couldn't believe the number of uh, San Francisco players, mm-hmm. I mean, te- uh, fans that was in the stand. I mean, all that red. I was like, "What? this is yeah. not San Francisco. But it was just uh, it was just crazy, Flex. And honestly, yeah. I'm sure you saw it. Oh, I saw, I saw a lot. Yeah, we it, it was amazing. It's probably of the year, all the years I've been doing this, uh, you know, the NFL inspectorship, I've been doing it for 23 years. I think this is the most opponent fans I've seen at a game. But then also, but I, then I, I kind of figured it out. 
is that there's a lot of San Francisco fans in Youngstown. Oh, okay. It, the the Bartlows, the, the, the Bartlows ownership. own it. Yeah. yeah. So I would think you know, like Youngstown, they you know they probably half 49ers, half Steelers, half Browns. I don't I don't know how that divvies divvies up, but I I just figured a lot of those guys didn't travel from San Francisco. They traveled from Youngstown. Right. Right. That makes sense. We got to take one more break and we'll be back with JT Montrose of Montrose Auto Group to give us a little fan reaction, and talk a little more Browns. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show with the top dog himself alongside Flex. We got in studio with us today. Really cool to hear about your story. Fun to hear you guys throw it back to your playing days. What, what was that you said earlier about Flex? You said Flex. Oh, yeah. We were, we were working on our scheduling for yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and said, I did. I did a dad joke. I said, <laughs> I said we're flexible. That was good. That was good. I like that. <laughs> we are flexible. We're, we're, we got a new guest in studio today. Very engaging. Honestly, inspiring story. I think that's cool. We should know as Browns fans our, our Browns past to really appreciate where we've been and where we're going. And it looks like we're going in the right direction, guys, especially after this big win. And we are going to bring in... JT of Montrose Auto Group, JT Thompson actually, <laughs> of Montrose Auto Group. Give us your game reaction or if you got any true or falses, I know. Yeah, no, I, I got a few true or falses that I want to ask these guys, but yesterday was probably one of the most incredible games. You know, the way that that game unfolded to see that we were still in it as dominant as watching the 49ers all season has been. I mean, you know, offense, defense, they're incredible. And to see the way that we played with them was awesome JT, it was absolutely awesome jt i have a question now. tell tell yeah. me the truth now i, I, I mean we were playing the san francisco 49ers did you think that we were going to win or did, would no. you have picked us to win no nope, especially that first drive i mean they came right down the field in the right. first i mean two minutes and like 40 seconds <laughs> they scored a touchdown yeah i mean they went through us like a, you know a knife through butter. I yeah. hadn't even gotten to my seat yet. And I, I looked up. I was like, "When did this happen?" <laughs> yeah, no, it was incredible. Though they, they they played well. It was it was a lot of fun to be there and experience that that energy. And you know, true or false for you guys, was that the best game script that Stefanski has put together since he's worn the Browns hat as head coach? That's a good question. That because, is a good question. Uh, and, I, 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 and, and I'll tell you why, and, and I'll jump on it real fast, and then you could take it flex, because um, I, I've been a critic of uh, Stefanski. I, I, I've given him a hard time, uh, especially uh, the loss of the Baltimore Ravens, mm -hmm. and uh, and I have to give him credit right now for this win, yeah. because I think um, I think he called a pretty good game. I mean, I really do. I, I, I thought he had the team ready to play. Yep. Uh, I thought offensively, defensively, and if you'd have told me P.J. Walker was going <laughs> to yeah. go out he, and was going to beat Brock Purdy, I'd have said you've lost your mind against that but, defense. Uh, he managed well, but I, Flex, I give him a lot of credit for that one. Yeah, I, I think he said the the two signature games was the the, the, the playoff win in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. but we were kind of expected to to play well and to win that game. Yeah, but this this game here yesterday. There was no expectations to win the game. Everybody I talked to said we're going to get slaughtered. Yeah, and and I stood up and uh, said I don't I don't think so because I think yeah. there's many different variables of why why the Browns will have a chance. I said but our defense is playing well. Mm -hmm. I said they played Sunday night, so they they got less rest. They have to travel to Cleveland. Yep, and the game starts at one o'clock, which is ten o'clock their time. Yep, and I said that's that that, that that makes a difference. And I says and if we play. Turnover free football, we're going to be okay, and we still won with two turnovers. Right. Well, did you did you still think that way when uh, Warner picked off uh, a PJ Walker? Wow. For the first yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I had you know I had you know bad thoughts, right. but, but uh. <laughs> so real quick, I got another true or false for you guys. So true or false, were you in your backfield back in the late eighties defensive backfield better than today's? Brown's defensive backfield. Oh, true or false? Oh, oh, hell yeah, that's true. We were we, we, we were better. <laughs> you know, you know what I think the difference is, and uh, again, Flex, you can comment on this. I right. think the difference is today is that defensive line that they have right now that they're playing with. Stout. I think uh, when you got when you have a guy like Miles Garrett that's right, right there, and 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 Zadarius. Uh, uh, and Tomlin, I mean, you, you got guys, I'm telling you, man, they they lay it back and they go after the quarterback. And 
with those guys up front, the way they're rushing, the quarterback can't hold on to the football. He's got to do something with it. He's got to get rid of it really, really fast. But there's no question about it. I mean, yeah. our defensive backfield, I mean, we were pretty damn good, Flex. Hey, I, I played with the, uh, you know, they, they say – one of the top corners in history. You know, they, they, they say Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes was the number one duel and the Menfield and Dixon were the second best duel. Yeah. Well, and you, and you look at our team and how I, how I base that on, on how good the 80s teams were as far as the defensive backfield is that Menfield and Dixon played in three Pro Bowls. So uh, Ward has played in two Pro Bowls or two or three, but the other corners haven't. Yeah. So when you say the total package – uh, and then, plus, I led the league in 89 in interceptions. That's right. That's right. So, That's uh, right. Don't you, you know. forget it. Don't you forget yeah. it. <laughs> so, I, I don't think we've led the, in interceptions uh, in quite some time here with the secondary. In fact, I don't know how many interceptions we do have in the secondary, but it, I don't think it's close to what we had in the 80s. I think it's two or three is all we yeah. got. They don't so call him sure. Pickmaster for nothing. That's right. <laughs> all right, last, last true or false. Hit us. Oh, God. Last true or false. Uh, let's see. How impactful is that stadium with the fans that we had i know i was listening to you guys talk about the sea of red comparatively speaking back to the heyday you know in those playoff games in the late 80s and 90s with you guys versus yesterday and well it's funny you mentioned uh that dog pound because right. you, you you know you got two dogs up here i know uh, uh right now talking about uh, Pickmaster and the top dog uh, <laughs> sitting up here. And, you know, back then, I mean, obviously it's a little bit different because the fans were closer to the field when right. we played. Yes. And that place was just absolutely uh, crazy. I mean, you know, when we played, people could bring in their own banners and they were hanging like all over the place, yeah. all around the stadium. And uh, they had a little bit more lead way. You remember that old guy called Big Dog? He's yeah. just oh, uh yeah. Big just dog. sit right there in the dog yep. pound, and we would always run up to the dog pound, and we had a lot of inter, a lot of interaction uh, with those guys. And I'm telling you, the place was rocking, yeah. absolutely. I think rocking. I think I think we back in the '80s had a, a a little better, more advantage because our stadium was bigger. We yeah. we could put eighty thousand people yeah. Yeah. in there, and uh, it was just if you watch some of the films from back in the day, one of the what the announcer says in the in the in the beginning is that it was pandemonium. <laughs> You know, so that means it was just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we want that. We want that to become us now and, and and bring that energy. I thought there was still a lot of energy in well, the stadium. I was shocked with the number of red jerseys. But, hey, Browns fans, they do their thing no matter what. Muni yes. lot, bad weather, uh, predicted to be slaughtered, everything else. We showed up and, and were obviously very loud. And, and don't get me wrong. By no means are we say, uh, we agree with you. No way mm -hmm. that we're saying that the fans are not loud and, and they're not doing their thing right Right now mm -hmm. at the stadium, I mean, if they're, they're pretty much drunk before they uh, <laughs> yeah. before they get in, I think the Muni lot opens at five o'clock right. in the morning, and right. and now you have the Muni lot, and then you got West Six. So between the Muni lot and West Six, all of them are there, and I, I guarantee you, they've had a few cocktails by the time they get in that stadium. Were you That's one right. that was having a cocktail before you got in the stadium yesterday, uh... Gab? No, no, I, I, I had to, I might have had a couple free drinks. Okay, though. okay, okay. <laughs> Can't turn them down. Um, all right, well, that's we're out of time. Thank you to JT of Montrose Auto Group. We're going to do some betting after this. Welcome back to the Hanford Dixon Show. I am calling in an audible, guys. We're not doing betting right off the get, uh, jump, okay? okay. We're, we're doing a little more Browns because this is the biggest win of the season, and we got to break it down a little bit more. I feel like we should start with um, PJ, okay? What did you, PJ Walker, what did you think of his performance? 18 for 34, 192 yards, two er, interceptions. All things considered, what did you think about his play? I was a little shocked. I was a little shocked of um, how well he played and how composed he was out on the field uh, because he was playing against a team that was pretty much number one in defense. I mean, obviously they got uh, Nick Bosa who is just a phenomenal pass rusher. Obviously, I think he had a sack or something, but they were pressuring him all the time. And then you got uh, Warner, who I think is one of the best um, uh, middle linebackers in the National Football League. And uh, obviously, they got um, uh, Lahorn. I mean, some uh, good corners. Uh, they got a pretty good mm -hmm. defense. 
And uh, I thought it was all over when Warner came out uh, right off the bat in the first quarter and he intercepted uh, uh, P.J. Walker. And I said, oh, man, we're in for a long, long day. But you know what? We kept hacking away uh, thanks to the defense. We kept it going. And what happened was um, the uh, the defense shut them down and the offense got rolling after a while. We were able to run the football a little bit. I thought um, Kareem Hunt uh, really yeah. came on. But, guys, we got to give a lot of credit. I mean, we gave uh, we gave uh, P.J. an outlet, and that outlet during the game was uh, Cooper. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought Cooper just uh, was outstanding, uh, went over 100 yards, 109 yards or something like that, whatever the number was. Uh, he played extremely well, Flex. So I thought with that outlet, uh, P.J. Mm-hmm. was able to keep it going a little bit. Well, I, I – I, I liked it that they started him and they, they brought him in because, you know, if, of what happened the week before with DTR, I just don't think that he he was ready yet. And I thought bringing in a, a veteran, he, he'd been around for four years. I saw him play down in Carolina last year, uh, and I, I thought he did a pretty good job there. So I liked the experience when he, when he came in with. And, and when my attitude coming into the game is that basically just if he can just do turnover – uh, no toner overs, I think we're going to be okay because hopefully Stefanski puts him in position to be successful. And uh, I think for the most part uh, with the play calling, it, it, it happened. But, uh, you know, there was, there was some little shaky calls there at the end of the game <laughs> that, I, that I wasn't real happy with. But I, I think overall – uh, he did a great job, and he did what was expected of him. And like I said, he's a four-year guy. He's not a he's not a rookie. So. Well, I, I was guys. I was. It was just so many penalties in that game. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it was just too many. I think it, that wasn't that the most flags of any game this season. It was yeah. crazy. It was I mean, it was it was absolutely crazy. And and what PJ did, I thought was really smart of him. He said he jumped on the phone and he called uh, Jacoby Brissett. And yeah. he called him and he talked to him a little bit. He said one one advice that Jacoby told him it was about Cooper. He said if Cooper wins at the line of scrimmage, just throw him the ball. And they right. got quotes in there, just throw him the ball. Really? And obviously, guys, we saw Cooper made. Obviously, he put uh, uh, one of the defensive backs made him fall down. Yeah. And he had a big big catch. And Cooper's not as fast as he used right, to be, but right. but the, he still can get o- open. And then another play. Uh, on the sideline where um, he went up. His vertical right now is still pretty damn good right. because you see him how yeah, high he, he did, got yeah. up on near the sideline mm-hmm. over there uh, on on another uh, defensive back and made a great play. Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I got a question for you, Flex. Uh, switching over to the um, uh, defensive side, obviously you played uh, safety, mm-hmm. and I want you to listen to this. Talking about Warren Thornhill, he uh, – Obviously, this guy uh, coming to our football team uh, just brings a brought a lot of wealth and experience right. uh, to the defense, and especially to that safety position. And uh, this guy, I mean, you look at him, he played in three Super Bowls. I, I think he's got two Super Bowl wings. And here's what he said about the defense. Listen to this. He said, this defense is the best defense that I've ever pl- been a part of. He said, I've been to uh, three Super Bowls, and if you're making it to the Super Bowl each and every year, you have to have a good defense. But this team is unbelievable. And wow. he's saying that this defense right here is the best that he's been on. And not only just him, one safety is playing well, I think both Safeties yes. are playing extremely well. I mean, what do you think about the safety play? Oh, I think the safety play has been been outstanding. I've been real proud of them because mm-hmm. you know that's the position right. I look at. Right. You know, I look at the secondary. Uh, I think they've been very physical. Uh, I think that the the, the plays they've they had an opportunity to make plays. They have. I think Delpit's got an interception. I don't know if Thornhill's got one, but I remember he got one in Kansas City mm-hmm. in, in that in that preseason mm-hmm. game, which was really impressive, and he scored on. Mm-hmm. So I know when the opportunity is there, they'll come up with the big play. Uh, but I like their physicalness. I, I think that's what safeties have to be. They have to be physical. They have to set the tone when they come up and hit the receivers because if they come up and hit the receivers, uh, then it make them think about the next time they right. come out there. And you'll get that drop when you need that drop. Well, so, well, really quick, what did you think about, uh, speaking of hitting the receivers, what did you think of the call that kept a drive going for uh, us on the San Francisco safety that came up and hit uh, – Totally a, a makeup call. Makeup call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were so many bad calls against the Browns that uh, yesterday. I think that was a makeup call. Although I was right there when it happened, and he threw it quick, so there was no hesitation when the referee threw the flag. 
but uh, it's 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 a different NFL that we played in. Yeah, because that would have been a, a great hit oh, on, you know, for ooh, us. Ooh. You know, and he hit him with his shoulder. He hit him with the shoulder. It yeah, didn't, I mean, he didn't lead or yeah. anything, so I I, I couldn't believe the it. Same but exact, it. The same exact the same exact play happened last night in the in the Sunday night game. And they and they picked up flag and said that was not a call and that, and that was a brutal hit. That was wasn't brutal. It? That yeah, was brutal. It was br- worse than than uh, the one yesterday. All in, right, in I'm throwing game. a shoulder into you. We're okay. running out of time. <laughs> okay. okay? okay. <laughs> it's good though because we got a great guest on and it's and we can and we can go it's, forever. Yeah, I know I you mean, guys yeah, can go yeah. forever and it's been really <laughs> special having you on. Thanks so much, Flex. We got one more break in just a few minutes to wrap it up. The show has flown by and it's been awesome. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for watching as we wrap up the Hanford-Dixon show. Okay, fellas, Browns defense to wrap us up here held the 49ers to 215 yards when they've been averaging over 400 a game. And our defense have allowed just 1,002 yards this season. That's the third fewest since 1970. We've been talking about how elite they are. But as we look ahead to the Colts, we've got a couple strong running backs in Zach Moss and who else we got? Uh, Jonathan Taylor. Okay, so how does the defense slow down these guys as we look ahead? I I don't think it's going to be a problem for us. I really don't because when you look at our um, uh, defense, it all starts on the defensive line, and and with those guys, they create a new line of scrimmage. What I mean by that is, say, for instance, when the ball start, if the ball starts on the forty, and uh, when those defensive linemen are off the line of scrimmage, they have pushed pushed that line back to like the thirty eight, so they're already in the backfield. Yeah. Well, I believe in Schwartz, mm-hmm. and I think Schwartz will put those guys in great mm-hmm. position. Uh, and we played against, the, some say, the best running back last week against McCaffrey. So we shut him down. We'll shut these guys down as well. Yeah, and they're going to have their backup quarter, quarterback in Gardner Minshew. So hoping we can have a, a dominant performance. He, he'll throw it to us, too. Mm-hmm. He'll throw it to us. Yeah, well, speaking of throwing it, well, let's do one bet before we head out. Browns at Colts over under 39 and a half. What do you think? Ooh, 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 ooh. Open on their 39 and a half. I'm going to the say. They're averaging 23.3 points per game and allowing 25.3. I'm going to say under. I'm going to go with the under on that because, again, you look who's that quarterback for them. So I'm going to say under. Well, but. because I work for the league, I'm going to say Browns win. Browns All win. Right. Yeah. Browns win. I like that. And we like it. Play like it, play it safe that. over here. <laughs> Felix, thank you so much for coming on the show. I thought we appreciate it, dog. Super yeah. engaging. Love to hear your story. Had a good time. And uh, we'll we'll be back with the Hanford Dixon show. Wait, are you, <laughs> you, yeah, and get that barking going, and we'll we'll have you back, Flex. Thanks right. so much, and catch us next time. Sounds good.